Today, we're going to be talking about how to make use of the five element personality types. Why would you want to know about them and how might they be useful for you, to you in your life? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. Marie Hopkinson here. I'm a herbalist and acupuncturist, and I love to make Chinese medicine easy to understand, break it down for you on the channel. That's what we do here. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, listening on YouTube, also welcome. So today we're going to be talking about how to make use of the five element personality types. Why do, why would you want to know about them and how might they be useful for you, to you in your life? So I've got several series on this channel that I started doing maybe a couple of years ago about the five element types. So wood, fire, earth, metal and water how to think about them. Then I did a few little videos, like I've got one that I did on love, for instance, and how those five element types or um, the traits, the character traits of each element, how they might be involved in something like falling in love or in a relationship, that kind of thing. So if this is something that you're interested in or you're new to it and you're like thinking, how would I use this? How would how could I make use of this in my life? This is the video for you. <laughs> so what the five element types are, kind of the Chinese medicine equivalent of the Myers-Briggs system or Enneagram or these kinds of um, even something as simple as the big five. Um, something like the big five is a little bit more, certainly a lot more clinical and um, done in a different way. But if you're inter if you've been familiar with the Myers-Briggs types, for instance, like INTJ, ENFP, all these kinds of things, then you would kind of understand how those types work. And the five element types are quite similar to that, except there's only five types. So that makes it easier. It makes it easier to learn it. And why would you want to learn it and learn about all the types and not just your own type? So there's two reasons why this can be useful. One is for yourself, to know yourself. And for me, I feel like this is the first part of self-care. The, the ultimate self-care is to really know who you are. Why would you want to know who you are? I'm going to go into that in a bit more detail, like how that can benefit you physically and mentally. And uh, then talk about, I've got some little notes here that I made, <laughs> to understand others. So if you struggle with relationships in the workplace, you struggle with a certain person in your life, you want to get along with them or you want to get an outcome there, for instance. Like maybe you just don't understand where they're coming from. Why do they do the things that they do? Maybe it's a child that you have. Maybe it's um, a, um, a person that, you, like there's got to be some reason why you'd want to have relationship there or you'd want an outcome maybe it's an employee and you just you want to know how to get the best out of that person or even how to make them happy uh this can help you understand or you're just be be bewildered by why do they do the things that they do why do we why do we why do they keep making those same choices or why do they keep doing these kinds of things uh if you're interested in having a better relationship with a spouse or a partner you know, in a love or romantic way or, you know, a lifelong way, then the more you understand that person, what's going to benefit them, it might be completely opposite to what would benefit you, what they would like. This can be very useful to, to know these things. So let's start with knowing yourself. Why is knowing yourself helpful? Um, I really struggled to kind of know myself when I was younger because I would do, the, I would just naturally have these traits and do these things and then wonder, why doesn't everyone else do that? <laughs> and get frustrated at other people or get frustrated at, why don't other people just get it? Why don't you just blah, blah, like that? And I then it wasn't until I would kind of had a lot of headbutting with things, with other people, frustration as well. I used to run various groups and things like that, like do a lot of stuff that required leadership. It required you to lead people in a volunteer capacity for lots of things where you'd have to motivate people to do things. And I would expect that people would have the same reason of motivation that I would. I just expected that. I didn't ever think there would be different reasons why, because that was just how I felt. I assumed everyone else felt the same. And no one teaches you this stuff. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm teaching it to you now. No one taught this stuff in school. And when I was younger, there was no YouTube. You know, I was around at the time when YouTube had just kind of started and it was so slow and buffering and there wasn't much going on, you know. 
that was when I was sort of maybe 14, 15, you know, maybe 16 by the time YouTube had, f you know, was first available. I remember us getting our first dial-up internet and it was always a fight between mum and dad needing to have the phone line free <laughs> so we could get on our little dodo dial-up. Anyway, that's not what this video is about, but I thought I'd give you that little story there for any Gen Xs that you can kind of um, share the pain <laughs> and remembering those, those are good old days. So... They weren't that. They weren't that great, but they were. They were old days. So why would it be important to know ourselves? So you're going to save yourself some of this frustration in in part because you will understand why do I think that way? Why do I feel this way? And it could be a good thing that you're feeling that way. Or it could be not so great. It could not be serving you. It could not be helpful to you. So to know yourself, right, can really be helpful. And then to know what you need to do to help yourself move to the next place you want to go to, the next level or the next, um, we could even think of this as this alchemy kind of journey. Now, I want to just also preface this, with the, I'm not an expert on this topic. I've read a lot about it and that kind of stuff, but I'm not as as much of an expert as there are other experts in the world that are better uh, positioned to help you with this. But what I've got on the channel is definitely enough for you to get started with it and for you to start understanding and exploring this area and make use of it in a, in a self-help kind of way. So to know yourself, right? The better you know yourself, the more empowered you are to understand why that you do the things that you do. And so not just know your strengths, but then also recognize your weaknesses. So this is how I would go about utilizing the five elements and the series that I've given you there. So you can start anywhere it, um, that you feel like starting at or you could go and do the personality test that I've made so I've made a free test that you can get I'll link it below this video but it's also linked below the other videos and what will happen when you do that test it's a new one that I've kind of created unfortunately I can't get it to work on mobile and I've done it a certain way so that it doesn't just tell you at the end what your personality type is it actually just gives you a numerical value for all the types so you have to do it on a desktop I'm really sorry it just does I just can't get it to function properly on uh iPad uh, on the on the tablets or phones or things like that so just have to deal with that but what's great about that test is you'll get a numerical value for each element okay so then you might be like tw 20 points on wood and um you know uh, 15 on fire and then you know seven on seven or five on the others something like that let's say just as an example there's quite a lot of questions there and it might feel like some of the questions repeat but um answer them anyway because sometimes when they're worded in a slightly different way it's not designed to trick you it's just um helping to reiterate is that really that is that trait really that important to you is that really yeah, yeah. So the, the test itself should be pretty self-explanatory. I also don't collect any data by doing the test on you. So you you sign up to get the test from me by email and then I'll send you the link to the web page. But I'm not collecting, I don't know, I don't know your personality type. I don't know I'm not collecting any of that. It do, it doesn't email you the results. You have to just take that, you know, take a screenshot or something at the end if that's what you want to do. So let's say you think you know your type, you get whichever is your highest type and then take note of the number that's the second most highest for you. So you'll generally have one type that's what called your dominant type and another type that's like more subdominant type. There is also an understanding in the five element theory, personality theory, that we have all these types within us, as in we have the ability of having all of those elements in us. Now, some of them just come easier than others. For some people, you are more rounded and balanced in a way, and you might come out very evenly keeled on, you know, all of the types. And you think, well, that doesn't really help me. But it's actually kind of cool like that that happens because it means you're kind of more, or probably more um, progressed in your alchemic journey, right, to transcend your element. So the first point is to know what your, your element type is, to embrace that, to understand that, to work on the strengths, strengthen those strengths, work on the weaknesses of that type, but then to be able to transcend that type to actually get more out of life and not just go, well, I'm not very good with people, so I shouldn't, I'm not a fire type or that's my lowest one, so I shouldn't even bother about being charismatic or something like that. So 
the first point I would say is after you know what your type is or you think you know, go and start with that video and then go and watch the other videos. Um, ask yourself while you're watching that video of your main type, does that resonate with me? And if it does, yeah, okay, that's a good, a good indication that, it, that it's um, part, of, part of who you are, a dominant part of who you are. If it doesn't, that's okay. Maybe um, go and redo the test or watch the second, the one that came second dominant for you. Watch that video and see if that more resonates with you because it, there's different ways in which we can kind of be, uh, know our type, right? Another thing that can happen here is you are a particular type, but each type can go out of balance. And when it does, that that's a pathology of that type. Now I do talk about those things in the videos and you may have may be able to pick up that stuff for yourself but this is where it gets really complicated if you're a practitioner and a person's highly out of balance it might take them a while to actually diagnose what their true personality or their true elemental type is. So um it's not as easy as it as it sounds in many cases so don't worry if it's feels a bit complicated to you it is definitely worth working it out if you've ever tried dabbling around or you've maybe you're really um, good at the Myers-Briggs system for instance that can be quite tricky as well to know what your type really is uh, and many people have to go and have a consultation with an expert to kind of work out what their type what their type is and even still then they might um, you know feel that they still don't truly know what their their type is so um, that, that's something to consider. But in general, five element theory for personality types is very much easier because there's only five types. So once you know what your type is and you know what your strengths are in life, you're going to get the most happiness by designing a life that lives those strengths. Work on those things. Give yourself permission to shine in those things. Go about your business in those things if you can. Um Explore some of those things that maybe you haven't explored as much. Uh, if you want to know how to benefit each type, that's what my course Five Element uh, Self Care teaches you. So it's a it's a, a pretty concise course, about four four and a half hours or so of video content, and talks about how to nurture each type, what benefits each type in a self care theory kind of way. Um, the next one is to then think about, okay, well, what are the weaknesses? What's the downside of this type? <laughs> That's not so easy. So it's better to do that after you've had some benefit of going, you know, strengthening your strengths and think about things like, well, maybe these are things I need to watch out for. Maybe these are things where I could easily be taken advantage of, or I've, um, you know, I've, I've easily lost money because of this reason in my life or, uh, maybe, you know, lost out of opportunity or things like that. And they are things to kind of consider to, to watch out for, right? Now, if there are things that are lacking in your life, the next thing to do is to think, okay, well, I have the ability to have all of these elemental things. Maybe I need to work on these things or I can, there's this idea that I can borrow some of these things within myself, right? It's not really borrowing, but it's digging down into the resource of that thing and learn those things and understand that you have the ability to to be that and to do that. I don't think those things are ever going to be a, a, a strength for you, but it is part of that alchemic journey to go, I can transcend this. I can transcend this, this thing. Let's say being around people is a good example to um, give because it's a, a one that people commonly can identify they either do feel benefited by being around others or they don't or there are times where you do and times where you don't maybe even so you know if that's something where you really shy away from anything associated with social things because you just don't enjoy that there is going to be a lack or there could have been a benefit that could have come to you from being from doing that. Um, and it might be a good idea to try some of those things in the future should those opportunities come to you rather than just saying, well, that's not my strength, so I'm just going to shy away from that and I'm never going to do that. So these are things where you just might work out for yourself and pick a time where you're not 
um, going through a hard time in other ways. So, you know, life is pretty good at the moment. Things are pretty stable. You're not going through a breakup of a relationship or you, um, you know, you're not changing jobs or moving house or some other big thing going on in your life, if you can help it. And then pick something and think, I'm going to work on this. I'm just going to, work, I'm going to, I'm going to look for opportunity to kind of work on this as best as I can. That's a good idea to do that. So the other thing that then comes to mind is after you've explored your own element, that's why I've said know yourself first, um, understand what your strengths are, look at the weaknesses of that element. Then you can kind of think what are some other, what are the, uh, what, what are the other elemental traits that maybe are not dominant for you? What, what are those element mental types like? And if you want to learn to help to type other people, let's say, or to get along with people better in their workplaces or, you know, strengthen those relationships or that kind of stuff. That's when you would go and learn about the other types. Um, you may have a partner and start with them because you might think, oh, yeah, I can really see that that's such a water trait in you or I can see that that's such a earth trait or you might have someone, you know, when I'm talking about the video, when I'm doing the video, sorry, not talking, but when I'm talking in the videos, I, often people in my life come to mind that I can think, oh, that's an earth trait from that person or something like that. Oh, that's a fire trait. Like I can imagine people, and they might, that might not be their whole element, but sometimes you only know people in a certain way. Like you only know them from um, something. Like I moved house once. This is a great example of something, right? So I moved house and I was on a main road and people would walk past a lot because it was just a thing. And I don't know if it was this lady was doing this to everyone or she was doing it to me because she thought I was a kindly person. I don't, I don't know. And I'm certainly not an earth element type of person, but this lady would walk past on her walker daily pretty much. And if I was there, she would say hello, right? She would, because she, I'd often be outside watering my garden. So it would, it would have been in the evening or something. And I had a little garden out the front and I would be watering that garden you know, I often do my painting out the front of the, on the veranda of this house because there was no out the back. There was only an out the front and it was a bit of a weird thing because you were sort of on show to the, <laughs> to the main road, but it didn't bother me. Um, and there was a big, there's a fence at the front, but she could walk through, walk, walk through the fence and just see me from the roadside. But she would come right in, come right up. And what happened is she noticed when my car was there, and if she was walking past, she would knock on the door, right? So sometimes I'd be I'd be having a sleep in the house or something like it. I remember once I I had done this, I do music and I'd done like all night gig thing because online it was back at the COVID time and I've got fans overseas and I'd done this gig like live stream at two a.m. so two a.m. and then six eight a.m. or something like that. And so I was sleeping in the afternoon and I hear this knock at the <laughs> at the door and it sort of woke me up and I'm like you know because so she was just so noisy that <laughs> I don't know if it's noisy but that is a tip that is an earth element person they 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 like relationship but they need it and they become needy or they can not realize that um that could be encroaching on others that don't feel that way but at the same time the world needs people like that because like you know I didn't at that time I did mine because I was trying to sleep, but it was kind. It's kind of nice that someone cares. It's kind of nice that someone walks past and says, "Hey, how are you going?" You have a little chat and you talk about your garden and you talk about things. And she would tell me she would, you know, I would save jars for her because she was an Italian lady and she would make things, and so I would save up my empty jars and she would take them and put, you know, tomato sauce or whatever in them. It's nice that there's those needy people in the world and that like needy as in I shouldn't make that that makes it sound bad but it can be borderline needy that's an earth element type she was a nurturing type she didn't care that I wasn't like she was treating me almost like uh, like a person she really knew and she didn't really know me at the start of walking past she just kind of inserted herself into my life um and that's what earth element people can easily do and that they don't think anything of that um they might not realize that so the the benefit of that as a strength would be that person generally knows a lot of people. They have a lot of people they could call on if it's a time of crisis probably because they're probably kindly people. They might do things for people. But the weakness of that is that 
they might be perceived by others as being annoying or being too needy or um, being a busybody, right? That kind of thing. So, or maybe they are that. <laughs> if they got really out of balance, yeah, they might be uh, not being able to see the boundary of like, oh, maybe I shouldn't just knock on this person's door and, um, you know, uh, to, to just say hello. But, at, you know, the, the benefit of that in society is, well, you know, someone might be inside needing needing a friend and, you know, they're being friendly. So um, hopefully that's a good example to, <laughs> a bit of a funny one, but a good example to let you know about understanding different types and why do people do what they do. Um, and then thinking about do is this is this going to help me to, you know, there, maybe there is a relationship that you're struggling to understand and think about, okay, how can I understand this person? What do I, what, what is that, what is that? Why are they doing that thing? What are they looking for? What do they need? Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's um. That, hopefully, that's useful <laughs> and helpful to you. So how how do you, you make use of this personality type um, thing? Now, if you get to all, through all of that, and you're still hungry for more, there's a few places you can go to learn more. Right. So one is I did an interview on my channel with a practitioner called Lita Herman. And she has a, um, I think called the Alchemy Learning Center, but they also have a, po- oh, Inspired Action, that's the podcast name, Inspired Action Podcast. So um, her and another colleague do this podcast and that's great. You can learn more about the five elements that way. She has a book that they've done. Go and watch the interview that that she and I did. And when we were doing this, I didn't know as much as I know now about this area, but I'd done all the five element personality type videos at that point. So that's a great resource to kind of go and delve and deeper into it. And then that, 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 those, pe- those, those two people in their podcast and in their book and this, they have a, a, a course and things like that that they do, that would take someone on that alchemate kind of journey to kind of transcend the five elements and also to understand a bit more about things that I don't talk about on this channel so much where you ha- they have the nine palaces and, you know, different things that are are needed for each person and how to kind of get what you get what you need in life and what's going to benefit you and all those kinds of things so that's a good place to go there's a few books I've me- I mentioned them on the series so I won't go through them now but there are books about it there's one that I use a lot called the between heaven and earth by I think it's Ephraim Corngold something like that I'm just looking around see if I have it in here I don't think I do um, that's a great one to get started and that has a little also a little quiz, little questionnaire inside the book. So hopefully this is useful and helpful to get you started in the personality types to understand. It's not supposed to be a medical system of Chinese medicine, as in it's not a treatment system. We wouldn't use it to treat you with acupuncture or with herbs unless you are a a five element practitioner. They do use this. They do use this understanding to kind of rebalance you and treat you. But that's a very specific system of Chinese medicine, that person, every practitioner studies the five elements. This is where it gets confusing, but not every practitioner is a five element practitioner. So there's a one school, I think in the UK, and there may be one school in the US, I think that does, that teaches this system. It's a very specific system of acupuncture, not of Chinese herbs that is designed to kind of help bring people back into balance in their in the element so I've also done an interview with a practitioner that I know in Perth who does this called Jessica Kennedy I think we did like two interviews on the channel so you can go and look at that and um, she does consultations for people in Perth Western Australia Um, other than that I don't really have any other recommendations of five element actual element five element practitioners so you can everyone can make use of this as a way to understand yourself and understand other people um, you cannot make use of this as an individual person to treat imbalances. That's not what the self-care is designed to do. It's not designed to treat an imbalance. It's designed to enhance or promote that element and to do things that are going to nourish various different parts of us, you know, what's right for each season, not to treat an illness that's already kind of happened so if that's the case, you need to see a practitioner if, if, if that's what, something you've identified or you think might be going on there. All right, I hope you're doing well and I look forward to seeing you again on another video soon. Don't forget to check out my course and the, um, the, the personality test that you can get for free 
from me and uh, the courses on sale at the moment. So um, it's a great way to support yourself and support the channel. Thank you.